Amen, amen. Brother and brother Robbie Monday, and I got a hot word this morning about the seriousness of not being shaped by lies. Not being shaped by the uh, lies and the, the ways of this world. I, 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 I was thinking about something from Paris Reedhead. I'm going to be listening to him like, like a broken record because he's the best by far. And what, what happens to me and my convictions and everything gets so red hot. So I'm pleased. Um, I love people to tune into this page, but more so tune into here and let's discuss Paris Reedhead material because he's the best. So um, next thing, uh, he says things like this. When you're sharing the word of God with people, that they ought to be mad, sad, or glad when they're done. They should not be the same unless they really are in true unity with you. And so because often they're not, then we have to recognize uh, that people should be changed by the word of God. Otherwise, we're not really living by the word of God. We're, li we're living by, the, by people. We're, we're not salted. We're not light. If there's no salt and light, how what's going to make it salty again? That's what the Bible says. And so God doesn't change. His word doesn't change. And we as people of God and his word cannot change. We have to be completely set apart to what God's word actually says. I was at a church yesterday and the pastor there was actually talking kind of serious. He even mentioned the H word in there. I was really surprised. I was like, whoa, he said hell. And he, I mean, I wish they, and I started feeling like, man, I can feel the people heard that and they heard him trying to gently, you know, in a comfortable West Coast coffee, mega church kind of way, let people know that you've got to get on track or you're not going to enter into his rest. I'm like, man, just even opening up the Bible to Hebrews 4 is a pretty bold thing to do in American Christian churches anymore because that chapter is terrifying. It is terrifying. And the Lord is saying in that book, he says, if angels can speak a message and people were judged severely for not following the message of angels how much more when christ comes and brings a message how shall we escape if we neglect so great salvation and paris reedhead says it like this he says i don't know the raven hill says it like this he says you don't have to snub your nose at god you don't have to curse god just neglect so great salvation and a lot of Christians are neglecting a lot of major components of so great salvation and not even concerned one bit about their soul. They're not even concerned. There's nothing about the gospel in America oftentimes to arrest sinners and let them know that God is not kidding around, that you will walk uprightly or you will be walking down rightly, <laughs> wrongly. Amen. That's what God's trying to tell his people. And years ago, decades ago, the church used to be severe. They used to have severity in there, and the churches would still be like, la, la, la. I could picture that man yesterday preaching with fire and just saying, brothers and sisters, let me, let me make it really clear to you. Jesus Christ is Lord of all in your life, or he's not Lord at all in your life. I love that kind of cut to the chase kind of talk because it shocks people. Like Whitfield says, you cannot wake a church up unless without a loud shout. You gotta raise your voice and say enough is enough. And when I hear him, Brother Paris Reedhead, one of the things I'm gonna listen to again, I heard part of it, is a message called A Brokenness. And about 15 minutes, 20 minutes into there, somewhere in, the, in there, the man starts getting erupting. If you need electric, if you need electroshock and you need to be woken up from like, your slumber or maybe something even worse, Asleep that we don't want to talk about because you're falling asleep in a bad way But it's not okay. God says we must bear much fruit or we're gonna be cast out into the fire Everyone who grafted into the vine is gonna bear much fruit and the fruit that we bear is going to be Righteousness if we're bearing bad fruit because we're a bad tree and we need to be converted to a good tree that bears good fruit That's not hard to understand. That's crystal clear teaching of Scripture and yet it goes, yes, we, yet we're able to preach a message that is not going to alarm people and arrest them and to trap them, to let them know you're busted. Checkmate. Repent or perish. That's what the book should teach us. I told that pastor, shook his hand. I said, thank you for even touching on that stuff. I didn't tell him that I think you could have hit that thing about a million times harder and still been right on, right on target. You could have been well within the mark, still hitting that thing harder. And empty that church out from comfortable people who are sitting there like, la, la, la. I told them, I said, look around, I still see people sleep, sleeping. And they need to know that this message hasn't changed. Well, how is it that the Bible was being preached before and people were grabbing their seats in fear 
And today we preach that exact same book because we're not preaching it the same. There's no other way to say it. But the casualness has is, is got to go. Men must be men and, and grow up and be a man in completion and for the rest of their lives. Yes, we ought to be loving and compassionate, but it, there ought to be an element about our convictions. When, when the rubber meets the road and we actually share what we really believe, we believe that sin is sin. We believe that sin, there is a sin that leads to death. There is a lot of lifestyles that are being lead, led in this in this nation, and we're responsible for warning the wicked and letting them know that there's a way that seemeth right unto man, but it leads to destruction. And if you don't repent, you're going to be in hell for eternity. You're going to bust hell wide open for living the way that you're living. Your lies, your dirty language, your your your, your deception, your perversion, your lust, your, your care for unpacking into this world and acting like this is home and this is really not home. We're just pilgrims, and the brothers and sisters need to remember this is not our home. We want to be comfortable to a degree, but really we ought not be comfortable when we're, we're wasting our time worrying so much about what this world is doing rather than what we are, the church, made to be salt and light. And if we really are salt and like I said, God doesn't change, his word doesn't change, and we as God's people don't change. Our message doesn't change. So if we're going to tell people the message, they, they are mad or they're sad or they're glad. They're glad because they heard the truth from, the, from a Christian for the first time in their life. They're like, whoa, that is so true. Now I have the answer. I was wondering why every Christian I ever met always tried to rub my shoulder and tell me everything's okay and Jesus loves me and everything's going to be just fine. And nothing can snatch me out of his hand. And it's like, well, that's fine, but it ha I have never really met God yet. How am I supposed to meet God if you just come and tell me that the Word of God is right where I'm at? No, the Bible doesn't say that. He says his thoughts are not our thoughts. He's not right where we are. And like the description is like this millstone. There's an outer revelation and the inner revelation, the law that was written on our hearts that testifies of the laws of God that we do know about. And the law, the Word of God comes and it's supposed to come and trap them with the, with the, with the um, integrity that we do have, with the, um, with the morality that we do understand. We can use situations of justice that anybody can understand. How do you feel should happen to this criminal who done this, this, and this? Destroy him. Cut him, up, cut, cut him up, throw him in prison. Give him a slice of bread a day. I mean, don't get, don't just punish the dude bad, you know, because we understand justice. But we mostly understand justice when it's someone else on the hot seat. But we don't understand justice when we are on the hot seat. And bless God, brothers and sisters in this world, everybody was born in the hot seat. We all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. We are all busted. We're all guilty. We're all criminals. We're all high treasonous rebels against the God who made us. We were born that way because we were born in the natural state. The natural man is the natural man is not is not in union spiritually with God. So even though you didn't even do anything, just the state that you're in is apart from God, and the flesh is no good thing that we were born into. And we all must be born again. Every person that's ever been born of a female on this on this planet must be born again and must repent from their ways and come to God's ways. They must live in completion to God's ways and not allow anything in their proximity to be unholy at all. Men have a lot of responsibility to make sure that everything under their care is done in purity. Like, like Job said, he says, Lord, I'm going to sacrifice every single day just in case the thoughts of my children is not totally pure. That's how careful he was. The Bible says that he was the most righteous in the world. So righteous that God can take him through a great mighty test and then show him his glory and ask him those 86 questions at the end of the book. That is awesome. <laughs> a lot of awesome things about that book. But brothers and sisters, if we are really changing the world, then the people we are sharing with as sold out Christians to living a totally radically upright life with nothing to hide... And then we're going to share a message of the joy that God has given us because we're not on the fence anymore. We are separate. And people are going to hear the message. Like they're going to say, I heard the message and it came clear. And it was very, very clear that they are living righteously and they have been touched by God. And they are a sample of God's grace. And that sample confounds me. And now I'm mad because I don't want to change my life. I'm already happy where I'm at right now, like Israel was when they were in captivity. They didn't even want to come out. God set them free, and they didn't even want to come out. So he brought them in three different groups of people, little by little. But still people stayed back in bondage because they were already comfortable in bondage. They didn't want to come out during the time of Ezra and Nehemiah. 
coming to rebuild the wall and rebuild, rebuild the temple and the foundation. They didn't even want to come out. And a lot of people, they don't want to come out, so they're mad. Or they're sad like the rich young ruler. Or they're glad because they finally heard the truth and now they have the answer and they've been honestly looking for the answer. They were an honest truth seeker. They were an honest truth seeker. No matter where the truth came, it made them look good or bad. They didn't care. They said, the truth is above me. It's beyond me. That's what I'm looking for. How can I find a joy that tells me I'm all right right where I'm at? You're not all right right where you're at. Nobody is. <laughs> a power from the grace of God and a sample of his grace that made you holy, made you righteous. Anything other than that, you're not all right. Okay, You're in check, at least. Some people are in checkmate saying, you better move okay there's some people who aren't living in the sins that lead to death so you're in check god will give you a check about something but those things don't want to go unchecked too long we got to come back to the repentance like like a like a dear charles finney would preach saying that you're going to make a long list of everything you've ever done wrong and repent of them as much as you'd want your worst enemy to repent of them and deal with them some of those some of those lists would put us in jail some of those lists would get us in trouble some of those lists would get us kicked out of ministry. Some of those lists would lose subscribers on YouTube. I mean, this is the kind of repentance that God requires. And this is the kind of stuff that I've been trying to learn on. And I have been so used to just kind of not listening to it all the time. And I, anyways, I, I just had a good time on the mountain yesterday. And I, I just really, really, this caused, caused me to say, Lord, I'm just going to keep on checking myself. I'm going to keep on looking at everything in my world. And right now, this is where, this is where, this is the truth. And I'm always preaching the truth. No matter where I am, I want the truth. The truth is beyond me. The truth is beyond everybody. So we're all going to be looking up to the truth. We're all going to be looking up to God. <coughs> as far as he's, a, he's greater than us. We're not looking up to him when we're coming to him like the man in the temple. Looking down, we don't even want to look at him. We have our face down. Don't even want so much as look up to heaven. And pounding our chest saying, God, be merciful to me. I know I am a criminal sinner. I am a criminal, Lord. And he leaves justified because he told the truth. If we get real with God, God will get real with us, and then we will be forever changed by God. If we, if we want to remain in that, we remain in the grace of God and not make shipwreck of our faith by listening to the modern guys who say, you're all right, right where you're all right. No. The Word of God in its true form arrests sinners and lets them know you are guilty. <laughs> God gave you a God-given conscience and you have, you, have, you, have a, you have beat it down. And sometimes our conscience can be seared with a hot iron. When our conscience is seared with a hot iron, we no longer have a conscience that is a safe guide. And so now at that point, we need to be able to go and uh, look at the Word and see what there is. Because it's a schoolmaster to bring us to Christ. The, 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 the laws of God, the Scripture is there to bring us to the, the Christ. It's supposed to pr present us to Christ. So let us know that we're guilty, whether you can feel it or not. That's why we have to go by the Word rather than what, what we feel. Because there is a time when you can feel it, but after you break that thing, part of your soul is dead. And it's seared with a hot iron. It's no longer safe. You can touch a hot stove and not even feel any pain and not even resist it anymore because it's so used to going there. And I can feel that um, temptation to allow that deadness to come into our lives. That's, it's, not, it's not the way we're supposed to be. Not me or not anybody else. <laughs> so anyways... Strong message. I got a ton of messages I've been recording. I haven't put anything online because I keep saying stuff in there that I don't really like. But today, I'm just going to put it on anyway. We all need to know that if we don't, if we don't live right, we're not going to be right. There are sins that lead to death, and those are not what we want. Amen.